So Simon, Gordon, and I represent macrophages and dendritic cell each. And, and while the field of macrophages have evolved independently in the past 25 years, uh, we all felt that uh, it was time for both communities to reunite. Now, the problem with it is that with 28 speakers, you have only 14 speakers on each. But the beauty of it is there is so many commonality of thinking and with different approaches that we felt that bringing together these two communities, bringing the young generation to listen to the approaches of one community versus the approaches of the other community would be really terrific. And we are really looking forward to that meeting. You know, for me, I have been involved in, in Keystone meetings as an organizer, now on the SAB. The key thing for the Keystone meeting for me is to educate the next generation. I am extremely uh, motivated to, extreme, to educate physician scientists, for instance. I think it is now time. We, we know how to study human beings. The science has progressed so much that we don't need to have model system. We, we will always need model system. Let's put it this way. But we can now attack very seriously the patients, the problem of disease in human beings. So what my intent is always to is to try to educate the next generation of physician, is to educate the basic scientists to the problem of the patients. And those are the people who are aiming at. Oh, I think Montreal is a fantastic place. I mean, I'm very excited that our macrophage and dendritic cells meet in Montreal, where the Anglo-Saxon and the French culture is meeting. So we're going to have a great time. It's a great time for partying. It's a great place. Uh, so it's going to be very exciting. And I really hope we're going to have lots of young people that are not going to show up we're going to give them the podium a lot. We're going to make sure that their workshop, uh, they can present to workshop. The senior people will go to their pastors, listen to them, and, and have a good time with them. I do think that the Keystone meetings are always extremely important. You know, of course, I attend the meeting that I am an expert in because I, I'm either organizing or I'm a speaker, although a bit less recently. Uh, but I have used myself, the Keystone meeting, to go learn on the field. You know, I know a field, is, I see a field moving. How do I do to learn in this field? Because I want to get into this field. I go to a Keystone meeting. So that's why we need to permanently, in organizing the Keystone meeting, we need to be ahead of the game. We need to be able to offer the scientific community something very up-to-date and where people will come to learn. Oh, my God, the significance of the Kistel meeting in my own career. You know, I must have been to 25 or 30 of those meetings, some year four or five times. Uh, so it has had a, a very fundamental role. For me, those are really the meetings that I'm attending regularly and on different topics. Uh, last year, I went to a bunch of them. I did B cells. I don't remember even all those that I did. But it's, uh, it's essential for me. It's essential. That's the way that I am renewing my science. This is the way that I, I get my science to the next step and the science of the institute or the lab or whatever. So Kistel meetings are just uh, terrific. And this is why it's very important for the Scientific Advisory Board to pay very much attention to do that. If you start to have a routine that shows up, you need to break it, okay? Because we have got to be, uh, to be really offering things that people don't expect even.